give everybody the opportunity to log in so we're going to start in just a second swipe and share Facebook, share with your friends. This is Wednesday night worship. Tonight we're going to be talking about it ain't over. Greetings from True Love Deliverance Church, where Pastor Larry, our devil Larry is our pastor. Hi, Katrisa. Share with all your family and friends on Facebook. Let them know that True Love is on. Our assistant pastor is Pastor Harris, none other than my wonderful man of God. Thank you all for coming out and sharing with us on tonight. We know that it is not over, and God has a word for us on tonight, and we want to share that word with you tonight. Hi, Diedra. How are you? Class of 85. Just want to give everybody an opportunity to share. 
Just going to give you a word from the Lord. You can change it. I want to just share with you all. Hey, Ashley. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about it ain't over. Uh, I want to share with uh, you all what I experienced on Monday. I was driving to work and um, I was just in my car praying to God. And I said, God, I'd be so glad when all of this is over. And I'm telling you immediately in my spirit, God spoke, it ain't over. And it disturbed me in a way. But I said, God, you are in total control and you know what you're doing. So I'm not going to question you. We just going to trust you, God. We can't throw in the towel no matter what it looks like, uh, no matter what it feels like. We just got to trust God through this process. I know Pastor, God gave Pastor Harris a word at the beginning of the year about the process. And it's just going through whatever it is that God has put before you with an expected end. And the end could be victorious. If you want it to be victorious, you can be defeated, but we won't be defeated. So we just going to press on and know that God is such an awesome God. And he does exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. So we just going to trust him, but know that it's not over no matter what it looked like, no matter what it seems like, no matter how you feel. I know we feel hopeless. We feel in despair. Sometimes we don't know what to expect. But we know that God is still God and he don't make any mistakes. Amen. So I want to pray first and then we're going to go into the word. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus name, you are such an awesome and magnificent God that you are. We come tonight, God, to hear a word from you, God. We ask you, God, that you would open up our ears and our hearts to understand, God, what you are saying to the body of Christ on tonight. We thank you, God, for this avenue, God, that you've given us, God, to get the word out to your people. And God, it's not by accident that this has happened. But God, we ask you right now in Jesus' name that you would meet the needs of the people. God, you know the hearts and desires of every person that, are, that is listening, those that are watching, God, via Facebook or whatever. God, we know that you know all things. And God, we ask you right now, God, that we sit at your feet, God, that we draw from you, Holy Spirit. God, that you would open up our ears and our hearts to understand us. Feed us, God, from manna on high. God, feed us, God, until we want no more. And God, we thank you right now, God. Let us apply that word to our life, God, that it may strengthen us, God, that it may give us a little more strength, God, to run on and see what the end's going to be. God, you said the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, God, but the one that endureth till the end. And God, we thank you, God, that we're going to keep pressing. We know that it's not over, but God, we're going to keep pressing. God, I know it seems dreary and dark sometimes, God, but we're going to keep pressing, God, till the finish, God. And we just give you thanks and praise, God. None of me, God, but all of you, God. Valerie, sit down, God, and the Holy Spirit rise up on the inside of me, God, that I may speak what you have for me to speak to your people on tonight. And we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's sakes say amen. Say it in your house. Amen. But I, as I was going back to what I was saying earlier about how God spoke to me and said, it's not over. So when I got home, I began to study the word and I, and I shared with Pastor Harris what he had said. And Pastor Harris was like, well, you need to give the word, share it with the people about it's not over. So I went and I did some research and I looked up Ecclesiastes 1.9 and it says, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. So what we're facing right now is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. So it may be new to us because it don't feel good to the flesh. But know that some of these things have already transpired. Some of these things have already happened in the, in the old days. And we're going to see some of that that happened in, in, um, in when we go into our lesson. Uh, and know that as long as we are on the earth, as long as we are in the earth, we're going to be dealing with something directly or indirectly. And it don't, you know, it's, it's how we go through it. Are we really trusting God as we going through it? Are we really relying on him? And, and understand this, trusting him meaning you don't have a plan B. That's what trusting him means. Meaning I put everything in your hands, God. No matter what happened with the economy, no matter what happened on my job, no matter what happened with my, with my finances, with my health, God, I'm trusting you through doing this process. And, and 1 Peter 4.12 said, it said, don't be surprised 
at the fiery ordeal which takes place to test us. So this is a test of our level of faith that we're going through right now. So you know that trials and tribulations will come. The word of God said it will come. But know that the results will bring a great testimony during those trials and tribulations. So we just got to keep pressing. We just got to keep moving. We got to keep trusting. We got to keep believing. We got to stay at the feet of Jesus. And so God is doing something. So it's not by accident that we are here at this present time dealing with this ordeal. Uh, trusting God, not just doing the coronavirus, because I'm sure we all have faced um, something in life that we just felt like, okay, God, th this is this is it for me. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to make it, how I'm going to go through. Even before the coronavirus came about, we were going through something or have been through something. Look at how God brought us out of that. So if he brought us out of that, what is this? He can bring us out of any situation. We just got to trust him. And I also, I just, I was sharing with Pastor Harvis about how doing this process, how God has bombarded heaven with the gospel uh, with on social media. You know, God will meet you where you are. I had to share that. I'm not saying you don't go to church. I'm just saying a lot of people deal with social media, Facebook, Instagram, all those other things that I have no idea what they are. But guess what? He said, you know what? I'm going to meet you where you are. And on the day of judgment, you can't say you didn't know him. You cannot say that you didn't hear of the blessed Savior. You cannot say that you were introduced to Christ because he opened up the floodgates to allow that to happen, even on social media. And so we thank God for this platform. So as we get into the word tonight, I want you to know that it's not over. We have an opportunity to get it right with God. And I believe that God has set this season us to allow us to get it right with him, to give us another chance, to give us another opportunity to get it right with him. Um, get back to prayer. Get back to sitting at the feet of Jesus and releasing all those things that have drawn us away from him, that has bombarded us in our lifestyle, that we put him on the back seat. And we need to put God back out front. We need to make him known in the earth. Amen. And we're talking to believers. It's important that we know that we got a job to do, and that's to release the gospel into the earth. So we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel. And the book of Ezekiel can be... A book that mm, I would say a resurrecting grace because the, pe the, the people of Israel were they were just engaging in all kind of things just I'm telling you I begin to read that and I'm telling you it was as if I was in 2020 right then reading that was reminded me of 2020 because so many things that transpired back in that time some of the same things that we've already experienced and some of the same things we are experiencing even now. And in, in our, But know that life can come after death. We can come back from this. And the answer is yes, and God has the power and the willingness to do so. So we can come back, but we will come back from this. How about that? We are. We're going we're gonna to come back from this. So let's go to uh, the book of uh, e um. I just said the book and I just, Ezekiel, Ezekiel I'm sorry, y'all, Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel, uh, the, 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 they were warned so many times of their simple ways to, to draw back from their simple ways. They were warned on many hands. And even today, I truly believe even today, God is warning us today. We're receiving a warning in this crisis right now to repent. First of all, to repent. To turn back to him, to redirect our focus on Christ, and to trust him. We can't trust in the economy, as I said before, not our prosperity, our possessions. We got to put Christ back in the front of everything that's happening in our life. This does not exempt leaders as well. We're talking about pastors, preachers, teachers, deacons, everybody, men, women, boys, and girls. We got to put Christ back into the front. So this is why I believe God spoke to me and said it ain't over because he's given us an opportunity to get it right. So the first thing I want to go to is for the chapter 14, verse 13 through 16. 
Ezekiel 14, 13 through 16. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to get there. Ezekiel 14, if you got your Bibles or your cell phones. And know that this is a personal thing. You got to get it right. Uh, it says, and I won't read it verbatim, but I'm just going to touch in on a few pointers here. It says, I'm at 16. Even if these three men were there, the sovereign God swore, swears that it would be no good. It wouldn't save the people from destructions. Those three alone would be saved, but the land would be devastated. He's talking about Noah, Daniel, and Job, how they were great men of the Bible. But if we drop down to 19, and this is what stuck out with me, or suppose I were to pour out my fury by sending an epidemic, that word was in there, an epidemic of disease into the land, and a plague killed people and the animals alike. Even Noah, Daniel, Job were living there. The sovereign God said, swear that they could not save the people. So what that's saying to me is this. Only the righteous is going to stand in this day and hour. Guess what? It's not the responsibility of your pastor, your friends, your parents. It is each, each one of us is responsible for having a personal relationship with Christ. We are responsible personally for getting it right in this hour. So guess what? The raw word of God said, if I bring an epidemic upon the earth, and we already see it, it, it is here. We got to get it right. In the event that God comes back, we got to personally get it right. So let's go over to Ezekiel 33, 11. I'm going, my, I'm going to Ezekiel 37. That's where I'm really going. But let's go to Ezekiel 33, 11. And it says, As surely as I live, said the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to turn from their wicked ways so they can live. Turn, turn from your wicked, O people of Israel. Why should you die? God assured them of forgiveness if they repent. God wants everyone to turn to him. He looks at what we are and will become, not what we have been. So he's not, God is not going to hold what we've done over us. He just wants us to repent and get it right. That's what he wants. He said, I don't want to destroy you. I will, but I don't want to. But I'm giving you an opportunity to get it right. And that's what I believe God is doing in this very hour, is giving us an opportunity to get it right. So our main scripture for tonight is Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. That's the main scripture for tonight. So if you'll turn to Ezekiel 37, 14, and I know that the situation we're in seems dead and dry, but I know that God's going to resurrect. God's going to restore. He's going to make all things new again. Amen. So it reads, the Lord took hold of me, and he's talking to Ezekiel, and he said, I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me around among the old dry bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere around the ground. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord said. Look, I am going to breathe into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscle on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will become life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke those words. Just as he told me, suddenly I spoke. There was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together, attached themselves as they had been before. Then as I watched, muscle and flesh formed over the bones. Then the skin formed the co that covered the bones, the bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak to the winds and say, 
This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. So I spoke as he commanded me, and the winds entered the body. And they began to breathe. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army of men. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, We have become old, bone, old dry bones. All hope is gone. Now give them this message from the sovereign Lord. O oh, my people, I will open up your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. This, When this happened, oh my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. You will see that I have done everything just as I have promised. The Lord has spoken. So tonight, you know, we're talking about dry bones. And Ezekiel asked the question, can these dry bones live? And that's the question that you may be asking yourself. You know, when you are separated from God, you're dry. Just in tr being transparent. When, you're, when you don't have a relationship with him or you're not connected with Christ, you are dry bones. So he said, can these dry bones live? And in Ezekiel's mind, you know, a human solution, I'm thinking dry bones, somebody's deceased. They can't come back to life. But God can do all things. He, he is the sovereign God. So Ezekiel said, not only you know this, God. He told Ezekiel, you know, Lord, Ezekiel told the Lord, God, only you know this, but you know that God can heal. God can deliver. God can set free. God can raise the dead. God can do all of these things. Every situation that we're facing in this very hour, know that God can raise it up and make it new again. And he can make it work again. And, I, you know, also, we feel like sometimes we're in this situation where, okay, God, I, I, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this household. I, you know, I want to get out. I'm tired of being in the house. But I'm telling you, it's a reason that we are quarantined. There's a reason that God has set this up. I believe God is doing some iron and sharpened iron even in marriages i believe that you know because we're busy and we're going here and there this is an opportunity for marriages to come together and get it right it's an opportunity for family to come together and get it right they've been dry children one direction mom one direction dad another direction guess what god said i'm gonna bring it all back into perspective i'm gonna put it all back but i'm gonna be in the front and i'm gonna make it line up to the way the way it should be so we get so busy and we just go here and there. But apart from God giving grace, we are all dry bones. So without the grace of God, we are all dry bones. And we thank God for the grace and the mercy that he's bestowed upon us each and every day. So uh, when he said, well it, well, it doesn't matter what it may look like, what the final outcome will be. When God says it's over, that's when it's over. But until then, it's not over. So... You know, the sickness and disease that's on the earth right now, the Bible said, God said, you got to speak to it. He told Ezekiel, I need you to speak to the bones. You, we got to open our mouth. We got to cry out before God. We got to lay out before him. We got to we gotta lay prostrate, prostrate before, the, before, before God in this day and hour. We can't sit and hold our hand. We can't sit and watch the television. We can't wait on the president and the governor to make a decision for us and our household. We got to cry out before God and say, God, have mercy on, on us. We need you to have mercy on us. God, we need you to restore what is now seems like is hopeless. We need you to bring hope back to a hopeless situation. God, we need you to restore peace in our homes, restore joy in our marriages. And I believe God is doing that. So no matter what the situation is, we are, we are to ask God to make all things new, not just to restore it. We, don't want, we want him to restore it, but we want him to make all things new. New hope, new peace, new joy, new understanding, a new relationship with him. Spending more time, a new thing in our life. Totally surrendering to him. You know, just like um, there were some things in the Bible day, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, they came out. God delivered them. So if he delivered them, he'll deliver us. 
Daniel's in the, Daniel in the lion's den. He took Daniel, took care of Daniel in the lion's den. He can do the same thing for us during this epidemic. Um, even when Job, when, when his wife told him to curse God and die, but God delivered him and restored him 100-fold, even the more, more than what he had before. So if God can do it for them, God can do it for us. He, Jesus came so we may have life and life more abundantly. So we just, you know, we can't hold our head down. We can't throw in the tower. We can't just, we got to know that God is God. And he's a sovereign God, and he do what he want to do. And we don't question his authority. We just trust him during the process, knowing that we got an expected end, and the expected end is going to be great. The expected end is going to be victorious. We're going to shout at the expected end. Amen? So we just give thank God for um, what he's saying in his word. You know, every situation in your life, um, I believe in this passage, uh, those bones, dry bones can't, they don't, um, they have ears, but you, you have to speak to them. You have to speak to your situation. Sometimes you got to open your mouth. As Pastor Harvey said, what, preached a sermon one time, to open your mouth and say something. You got to open your mouth and say something sometimes. You got to open your mouth and cry out before God and say, God, we need you in this hour to restore God, to make new God what is dead, God, to resurrect God what seems to be dead, to Lord, to bring life to what seems to be dead, to bring light to what seems to be dark. God, we give you glory and praise God. We thank him for what he's going to do in this very hour. At this time, we got to trust him, but we got to turn back to him. I believe God is saying, turn back to me. Come back to your first love. Cry out to me. Lay at my feet. Come at the altar. Surrender. We're not in the churches, no. But guess what? God opened up an avenue for the word to still go forth. God opened up an avenue for the word to be even the more. I believe even the more. I believe the word is going forth even the more in this epidemic. So we just thank God for that. We know that um, no matter what the situation may look like, no matter what the situation may look like, I want to encourage you. I just want to get on and just give you all some hope to let you know that it's not over. Just to let you know that it's not over, but that God's going to resurrect us. God is going to resurrect us, but God is requiring some of us. God is requiring something from us, and that something is us, our life. He wants total control over our life. He wants us to surrender to him. Don't make nothing else no idol. I know we're in the house, and back in those days, the, the children of Israel, they built all these idols. But guess what? We made things our idols. We got 40-inch idols. We got iPads idols. We got iPhone idols. We got all these idols, but we're not spending time with God. And God said, you know what? I need you to make put me on the front. I need to be the lover of your soul. And we thank God for just taking time out to, you know, just giving us another opportunity. So when God spoke that word to me and said, it's not over, and I said, God, I'm, I'm ready for this to be over. God said, it's not over. And I really believe in my heart, so heart, that God is allowing us more time to get it right. So we need to get it right. We need to trust God, knowing that he can do it. We need to repent. I know most of the time those messages are not popular about repentance calling out to him and telling him, you know, God, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. God, I can't do this by myself. I know that you are the living God. I know that you went to Calvary Cross and died for me and shed your blood and only your blood can wash and cleanse me and purify me and make me whole. And so that's what we have to do. We have to go back, go back to our first love. So I just want to encourage you, Facebook. I want to encourage you, true love, all my friends, my family, all those people, we got to spread the gospel. We don't want the blood required at our hands. We don't want the blood to, we don't want God to say, listen, you had an opportunity to spread the gospel and you didn't. We don't want him to say, you didn't do that and I gave you that opportunity. We want to ask God to forgive us and wash us and cleanse us and purify our hearts and our minds and our thoughts of everything that will hinder us. We don't want to miss heaven, y'all. We don't want to miss heaven. We don't know when it will, when the, a time will come, 
but he knows and we want to be ready we want to be right we want to be real in this walk with christ so as we get ready to close out today i just want to leave you with something i want to leave you with something really quick if you would just bear with me let me find it but i want to leave you with this although the people had broken the promises and did not deserve anything but punishment. And we're gonna talk directly about us. Even though we've broken some promises and we deserve the punishment, God would not break his promises. If the people turned back to him, he would again forgive them and renew his covenant. This covenant would put into effect when Jesus paid for everyone's sins at Calvary Cross. No one is beyond the reach of God's forgiveness. Although we don't deserve anything but punishment at times for our sins, God's arms are still stretched out wide. He will not break his promise to give us salvation and forgiveness if we repent and turn to him. So we got to repent and turn back to him. And just tell, it's, it's a simple prayer. God, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I messed up. I sinned, I did wrong, I thought wrong, I said wrong, you know. So it's not a heart prayer, but it's a prayer that is needed at this very hour for God to heal, for God to deliver, for God to set free. So if you could, if you bow your heads with me, and we just going to pray and ask God to restore us. We're going to pray and ask God to renew us in this very hour. And I want to encourage you, all my family and friends, don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Keep fighting. There's no other power than the name of Jesus. When you don't have nothing else to say, just call on Jesus. When you look at the, at the news, or if you're looking at the news, or if you're looking at the reports and the results and what they're saying, how many deaths, just call on Jesus. God knew over 2,000 years ago that this day would, we'll be sitting here with this crisis but knowing that he is the Christ that can resurrect us from this crisis. He's the one that can do all of this. So we just want you to be encouraged. We want you to lift your head up. Look to the hills for which cometh your help, because your help come from the Lord. He's the maker and creator of all things. Speak the word. Pray the word. Sleep on the word. Sit When you sit down, eat, eat the word. Constantly Constantly say the word. Constantly read the word. Pray the word. Constantly. The word. The word. The word. The word works. The word heals. The word delivers. The word set free. And this is our roadmap. This is everything that we are experiencing at this very hour is already manifested itself in the word. And this is our guide right here. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we give you thanks and praise, God, for who you are. God, for you are such a sovereign and awesome God. And we love you at this very hour, God. Thank you, God, for drawing us back to you, God. Thank you for your forgiving power, oh God, that heals, delivered, and set us free. God, we ask you right now, God, that we know that you are the only one that can save. God, you're the only one that can heal. You're the only one that can deliver. God, you're the only one that can set us free. God, thank you for your anointing, God. Thank you for your power in this season, oh God. God, we're going to stay grateful, God. We're going to stay thankful, God. God, we're going to remain joyful, oh God. We're going to rejoice in the free gift of your salvation, oh God. That you are the only one that can save us, God. Save us, God. Wash us and cleanse us, oh God. God, put us back in our rightful place with you, God. God, put us back on, put, we want to put you back in the front, God. We don't want to put you in the back seat, oh God. But God, we want to cry out to you, God, knowing that you are the God that can do all things. God, we give you thanks and praise, God. Burn up anything and everything, God, that's on the inside of us, God. That will keep us from your grace, God. That will keep us from your mercy. God, we love you at this very hour. We praise and thank you. Holy Spirit, rest upon us tonight, oh God. Holy Spirit, shower down your anointed upon us, oh God. God, let your word, God, saturate our hearts, oh God. That we won't sin against you, oh God. Let your word, God, gird us, gird us up, God, 
with power and authority, oh God. God, when we're weak in our spirit, oh God, we know that your word can lift us up, God. God, we ask you right now in Jesus' name that you do, God, a work on the inside of us. God, all those are watching by Facebook, oh God. All those family and friends, oh God. God, give us a heart. God, draw us near to you, oh God. Tug at their hearts, oh God, that they won't turn a deaf ear to you, oh God. God, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your love. God, we thank you for going to Calvary Cross, oh God. God, we thank you for dying for us, Jesus. But God, you did stay dead. God, you was resurrected on the third day, God. And God, you got up with all power and authority, God. And that same power you gave us, God. We thank you, God, though. You are righteous, God. That makes us righteous, God. You are holy, God. That makes us holy, God. And God, we walk in the same power and authority, God, that you've given us, God. And we give you glory, God, for your awesomeness, God. You are such an awesome God. And we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. Thank you, God, for drawing us back to you, God. Thank you for forgiving us, God. Thank you for redeeming us, God. We thank you, God, that we're going to come out victorious, God. God, you're going to make all things new. God, you're going to restore, God. You're going to rebuild, oh, God. And we thank you, God. This too shall pass. But God, during the process, oh, God, we're going to go through the process knowing that we will come out victorious. And we give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name. And in your home, all God's saints and agreements say amen, amen, and amen. We love you. God bless you. Be encouraged. Keep looking to the hills from which cometh your help, because your help come from the Lord. We love you. We honor you. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, Father. He's worthy, Jesus. You're worthy.